Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley. And today we're going to show you some of our favorite terrain that we have been working on. Hey, uh, before we get into this though, will you take a moment please and make sure you click the like and the subscribe button. If you're already one of our subscribers, make sure you hit the bell so you'll be notified when we upload a new video. So I have been working on this box right here. Very cool. City wall set by Rubicon. Good stuff, boys and girls. Good stuff. And I've also been working on the industrial wall set, and that's what I worked on today. I'm going to show you some pictures of both of them. Uh, now, as far as the city wall set, I've got about, I've got two sets of that put together right now, and I think that'll probably be enough, uh, so here I wanted to show you what it looks like all put together and sitting on the table. Here it is. Now this is set up for a game that we just recently played on Sunday. Check that out. That's a good looking wall. Good looking wall. Um, yeah. Very modular. I have most of it. Uh, I can pull apart and re, uh, you know, arrange it the way that I want to. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, as far as the industrial wall set, now that's the city wall set right there. Uh, here is the industrial wall set, and this, this I was working on today. I've got uh, most of the paint on it, and um, I, I still have uh, maybe one or two steps left, but this is all I'm going to do for it today, and I, I'd like to, and if you guys want to see how I progress with this, let me know, because I, I want to show this to you. Now... Folks sometimes ask what paints we use, and uh, for the uh, for the brick, we're using uh, Army Painter Fur Brown is the color that we use for the uh, for the brick color, and for the uh, concrete, the cement color, we're just using Army Painter uh, Uniform Gray. So those are the two colors that we use primarily, uh, both for both of those sets, for the city wall set and for the uh, industrial wall set. Now, for to give it a little bit of highlight, I'm going to show you dry brushing today. And I know most of you probably do your, your dry brushing, but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. If you're not familiar with dry brushing, maybe this will help you. And even if you're a longtime dry brusher, maybe that, this, this will give you some ideas too. And if you have some ideas, share them in the comments below. So the, the paint that I use for the uh, dry brush is this Deco Art, uh, really cheap Americana stuff from Hobby Lobby. You can get this stuff for like a dollar or two dollars for uh, six ounces of it. So really nice stuff. Getting some really cheap big brushes. There's, here's the paint. Um, now these, oh, there's my phone. Okay. Uh, here's what the walls look like uh, with the dry brushing. So this, th these walls, I've already put some of the dry brushing on there, so you can see how it looks with the uh, with the uh, that gray, that lighter gray dry brushed on. So I do have another step that I'm going to do to these, but you know. Uh, these could easily be just put out on the table and, and you can just go with them from here. I, I think they look fine even at this step. Um, so just shake up your paint a little bit. Uh, I use the cap uh, as the, uh, you know, to, you know, as the, the pot. Um, dip my brush in there, get it, get it loaded pretty good, and then start wiping it off until I feel like I've got about the right amount. And that's just something you got to kind of learn as you go along. Now, if there's a tip here, it's always touch very, very lightly at first until you get a feel for how much paint is loaded on your brush. So you can always add a few extra strokes, but it's hard if you, if you lay it on too thick to begin with, it's hard to get that back off of there. So here I am just kind of getting a feel for how much paint is on my brush. Now that I've got a, an idea of what I'm dealing with, you know, I just kind of start slapping it on there a little bit heavier, pushing a little bit harder now just to, to I'm really wanting some high contrast here because it, some of that contrast is going to be lost in the next step that we do. So here I am just slathering it on that, that other side there. I, I have a good feel of how much 
paint is on my brush now. I'm gonna hit the top of the wall here and I kind of dab it a little bit to give it a little more accent, a little more character here and there, just to give it actually some, some imperfections. Uh, I, I want it to have just kind of a, you know, a real world randomness to it. So that was another wall. And there are six walls that come in that industrial wall set. I think all total, it's, it's supposed to make somewhere between, uh, what is it, uh, 28 inches of wall? No, let's see. Yeah, it says 28 inches of walls. I think that includes the, uh, the spacers, the little pillars between the walls, and also probably the gates. So... Uh, here I am slathering on the dry brushing, so there's a, I think there's six sections of this. Uh, always hit your edges, your corners, those sharp points. Hit those uh, really kind of helps pop and give it, you know, that 3D look. Um, uh, gives it a little more depth, you know. And then adding a little extra little space speckles there just kind of dabbing it on to, to create some imperfections in there just like that now there is a top piece that goes on those pillars so I don't I worked on those earlier today uh, and they're not in this video but there are these cool little topper pieces that go on those uh, those uh, spacers in between the walls those pillar pieces so uh, again you know, when, you, when you're starting off, always do it very lightly until you get a feel for how much paint you have on your brush. And then once you get a feel for how much paint you have, then you can start, you know, laying into it a little, a little harder. Uh, but yeah, it's always better to start off with just, just barely touching it to, to get a feel for how much paint you have on your brush. There you can see me kind of just slathering it on there. Kind of got a little bit of a streak there. Try to rub it. Eh, it's not going to come off. It won't matter in the in the long run, you know. I, I definitely paint to play. Uh, this is not for a diorama. Uh, it's not for a magazine. Uh, I paint stuff up so that I can put it on the table and, and play. So... I like it to look nice, but good enough is good enough as far as I'm concerned. So I, I'm not trying to make it perfect by any means. Let's see. And then I have, I think, then I have just these last two uh, pillars. I'm trying to make this fairly modular as well. I, I like the idea of being able to take it apart and put it together the way that I want. This is a little trickier. The industrial wall set is a little trickier to do that because the, the top piece on those pillars, if you're going to take it apart, you've got to leave some of those loose where you're going to take it apart because otherwise uh, the way it locks together, once you lock those together and you glue that, that top piece down, you can't get it apart anymore. So. I'll, I will leave, I'll, I'll probably end up leaving most of them off uh, or leaving most of them loose and, and putting them on. So here is, uh, you know, just finishing up the dry brushing. Very cool. Yeah, just adding a few extra little uh, bits of character here and there. Um, and that's it. That is it for the dry brushing. I'm going to try and hold this up and um, let me get them all on here. Hold this up and... and uh, um, show you what it looks like if I can get a little bit better look. So that's what it looks like with the dry brushing. And that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's good enough to put it on the table and play with. I am going to do more. So if you would like to see more, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see this. Um, let me know if you do dry brushing as well. I, I would like to know how you do your terrain. And I think, I think, uh, Terrain is, is probably one of the best things to use dry brushing on because it lets you cover a whole lot of area uh, and, and get it done relatively quickly. So uh, let me know, do you use dry brushing? Uh, do you use it on your terrain? Do you also use it on your miniature? Sometimes I'll use dry brushing on my figures as well. So it really just depends on what kind of look I'm going for. Um, make sure you have clicked that like and the subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody.